Hi everyone, what's good? Welcome to my Morrowind video guide all about how leveling and skill training NPCs work. Now, as I'm running through all of this information, keep in mind that being 100% efficient with the leveling process is far from necessary. Morrowind is an easy enough game when you understand how it works, and furthermore, any shortcomings your character may have can be shored up using enchanting effects. As with all my other Morrowind Guide videos, I'll have timestamps in the description if you'd like to skip around. So at the most surface level, your character progresses through levels in Morrowind by increasing any combination of your major and minor skills ten times. You can monitor this progress by just hovering your mouse cursor over your current level on your character's stats menu. Once you've gotten those 10 skill ups, all you need to do is have your character rest. You can level up by resting in the wilderness as well, it doesn't have to be done in a bed. In the likely event that you level your major and minor skills more than 10 times before resting, anything over 10 will roll over and count towards progressing your next level. This is what people usually refer to as over leveling. Anyhow. What many people don't know about the leveling process is that skills classified as major and minor progress at a faster rate compared to miscellaneous skills. Skills within your class's specialization also received an increased leveling rate, but we'll cover this more in a bit. For now, let's check out just how much faster our major and minor skills progress. Now, while it doesn't exactly help with understanding, Morrowind's code defines minor skills as the standard skill bonus rate at 1.0. Miscellaneous skills come in 25% slower at a rate of 1.25, and major skills progress 25% faster at a rate of 0.75. Keeping all that in mind, I have seen conflicting information from several sources that say major skills actually progress 42% faster, rounded up from 41, compared to minor skills. Although this ultimately won't change any decisions we make, I think it's a good idea to have this information out there nonetheless. Anyways, on top of all of this, any skills that fall under your class's specialization then progress 20% faster at a rate of 0.8. Mind you, that if you're plugging in the numbers for yourself, this specialization bonus is multiplicative, and not additive. With that out of the way, let's look at what happens when we do level up a character. First, the character's health is increased by 10% of their endurance. If you increase your character's endurance when you level up, then that increased endurance is used during that same level up. This increase in health does not round up. Instead, those remaining amounts are used towards future level ups. This makes endurance a valuable attribute to have high early on, especially since this health increase is not retroactive. Anyways, perhaps the most important part of leveling is that you get to increase three of your character's attributes by up to five points each. Now, you may have noticed that every skill in the game is governed by an attribute. This is where that comes into play. What determines how much you can increase an attribute when you level is how many times you increased that same attribute's governed skills on the same level. Now, that last part is vital. This is because, as far as attribute increases are concerned, skill increases only count for that same level and do not have any rollover. This is unlike how general character leveling works. Anyways, let's take a look at exactly how many skill ups are necessary to pass each threshold for increasing an attribute. You'll notice that it's 10 skill increases that net you a 5 point increase to their corresponding attribute. Keep in mind that since luck doesn't govern any skills, you can only ever increase it by one point per level. Thankfully for the rest of the attributes, this system actually includes miscellaneous skill increases as well, not just major and minor. So, 
you can level miscellaneous skills to ensure you get 5 point attribute increases whenever you level. This is actually where skill training NPCs really come in handy. If you're about to level up, save your game, rest, and level, check out your attribute increases, and then reload your save and start to hit up skill trainers. That way you can try to reach that coveted 5 point attribute increase. In the event that you're entirely new and unfamiliar with Elder Scrolls games and or their skill trainer system, we'll quickly go over their basic functionality in Morrowind. Skill trainers are basically NPCs in the game who, for a price, will offer to increase three different skills. When you do this, in-game time passes and your corresponding skill increases by one point. Unlike later games in the series, Morrowind doesn't technically have a hard cap for the amount of times a character can do this per level. Instead, there's other limitations, which we'll cover shortly. One final piece of fundamental information I'll add, though, is that some trainers won't offer you their services if you don't belong to their guild or organizations. Furthermore, some of them will only offer training to high-ranking members. Now that we've covered the bare-bones fundamentals of skill trainers, we can start to go more in depth. First, the amount by which a trainer can increase your skills is limited by two things. Your character's attributes and the trainer's own individual skill level. As we covered earlier, every skill in Morrowind is governed by an attribute. A skill can only ever be trained by an NPC as high as its governing attribute. The second limiting factor is the trainer's personal skill level. A trainer cannot train you higher than their own skill level. This makes things difficult because there's really no way to know what every trainer's stats are without looking them up first. However, each skill actually has its own master trainer who can train you all the way up to 100. I'll have a link in the description to a useful table from the folks at UESP.net that lists all of the master trainers and where to find them. Now, there are two important caveats to these master trainers. Master trainers, like any NPC in the game, can become hostile to your character depending on your actions as you're playing. In fact, one master trainer is hostile to your character by default. If you want to make use of this person's services as a trainer, you'll need to use either a calm spell or figure out a clever way to activate their dialogue without triggering a combat engagement with them. Secondly, in addition to charging higher prices as your own skill levels increase, trainers charge more the higher their own personal skill is as well. It's worth adding that having a higher disposition with a trainer will reduce their prices a little. When it comes to trainers who can also barter you can get your money back through selling them items. However, you must open their bartering UI before training so that your gold is added to their available gold. Finally, it's important to know that a couple of these master trainers are just messed up in the game. The master armorer trainer is bugged and won't have any available training UI, and the master medium armor trainer Straight Up doesn't even exist in the game world, despite existing as an entity already in the game's code. Thankfully, several community mods and patches, like the unofficial Morrowind patch, fix these problems. Okay, I believe that this wraps up everything about leveling a character and his or her skills through a skill trainer NPC. Thanks for checking out this video, and be sure to check out my other Morrowind guide videos in case they cover something that's useful to you. Also, I've got a weekly Morrowind playthrough if you're into that kind of thing. Thanks again. Peace!